Um, so I'll just start with hi everyone. Um, my name's Leon. Um, I'm 22 years old and I'm a community engagement assistant here at Chester Zoo. Um, I'll start with addressing the elephant in the room. Um, if you're wondering about my shoulder um, for my company induction, um, I actually had to arm wrestle a chimp. Um, <laughs> and you can probably guess the outcome from that. Um, so I guess I was going. A little bit about me is um, my, I'm from England originally, but I've spent most of my life growing up in New Zealand. Um, so I pretty much grew up there and only just moved back to the UK about in September last year. So I haven't been back too long. Um, growing up in New Zealand is slightly different than growing up here, you could say. Um, um, it's a bit more of a different take they have on things over here. So there's a kind of a lot of trucks, um, they're into the guns, kind of things like that. So I kind of grew up in, a, I guess, a bit more of a anti kind of uh, wildlife environment over there. but. Um, and obviously, if you're wondering why I don't have the accent, um, I couldn't answer that either. I just never got it for some reason. I was there for 10 years, I never got it. Um, so, also, I've been a vegetarian my whole life. Because um, even as a little kid, I was kind of never wanted to hurt the animals. It, I don't know why I thought me not mean eating meat would help, but um, I guess that was just kind of something ingrained in me since I guess I was a younger child. Um, I lived in Christchurch, um, which is on the South Island. Um, it was probably a city that was devastated quite badly by earthquakes not long ago. Um, so it hasn't fully recovered, but it is home to Arana Wildlife Park. And that is somewhere that I spent quite a bit of time. Me and my family were regular kind of visitors there. Um, so I spent kind of a lot of time just even going on and just watching the animals. I remember like there was one time um, the chimps were kind of through a glass window and you get really close to them and I, I, I just kind of be standing there and the people like would tell me we're closing, we're closing, we're closing, okay, 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 don't worry, I'll come out and I just kind of used to get badgered so that was a really big kind of part of my upbringing was spending a lot of time just in and around animals. Um, I also lived about a 10 minute walk from the beach um, and about a two minute walk from the forest which was right at the end of my street so even when I was walking my dog or hanging out with friends I was kind of always um, connected with nature and I think that's something that is kind of overlooked and I think that's something that's really important. Um, I guess along with conservation I'm passionate about sports, um, very stereotypical I know. I love football and cricket and that's how I did actually hurt my arm um, and it was actually a colleague here who helped me out when I did hurt my shoulder um, and, and he looked after me until I could go to the hospital and I'd only known this person for a few months and this was my first kind of interaction with him outside of work. So I think that says a lot about the type of people that work in this industry, and particularly at this place in Chester Zoo. Um, I've always kind of had a passion for animals um, and conservation since I was a young kid, hence the weird vegetarian kind of thing I had and still kind of have. But the first thing I was really obsessed with was sharks. Um, I used to watch so many documentaries like you wouldn't believe and I admired my parents for any shop we went in to see if we could get kind of a shark toy or something and there's still actually a box in my garage that I found last year when we were moving back to the UK and it's full to the brim of just soft toys or any kind of toy. There's even a box of an old Easter egg with a shark on it um, and I just don't have the heart to kind of throw it away. Um, when I, but I guess when I left school I did, I guess what you call sixth form over here, but, and I left school and I went straight into network engineering. Oops. Um, and I did that for two years until I left and come back over here. Um, and it was okay. Um, it's a job, um, it was, I guess it was it's well paid, but um, it was something that I never really had a massive passion for. Um, it was just kind of something I'd go to work, I'd come home and I'd kind of think, oh no, I've got to go to work tomorrow. And I'm sure if you kind of had a job, you kind of know that feeling. It's, there's nothing really worse when you put your head on your pillow. You think, when I wake up, I'm going to work. Um, so I thought to myself, when I come back to the UK, I'm going to give myself a real go at finding something that I'm passionate about. Um, so I come back to the UK, and within a few months, um, I see a job here through Kickstart um, as a community engagement assistant. So I, I applied. I, un I really honestly believe I didn't think I had any chance of getting it because I had no experience in conservation. All I had was kind of a passion for it 
my background was a, was in network engineering and at school I did ICT and P and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I really didn't think I could get it, but before I knew it, I'd somehow got the position. Um, so touch wood, my good luck continues. Um, and I guess the, I have to tell you about the only other time I actually come to Chester was when I was a young kid. It was for my second birthday. Uh, my parents brought me here, so I'm pretty sure it's more of a present for them than it was for me. So I'm not sure what they thought two-year-old me was going to do. Um, but we actually got the VIP tour because my uncle um, worked for a company that sponsored the Jaguar house. So we got a VIP tour and my dad got to go in and kind of feed the lemurs. And there's a picture with like two lemurs kind of sat on him and one like pooed down his shoulder. Um, and that's kind of like the only, I don't even remember it, but that's kind of like the only resemblance. But so when I got the job here, I kind of thought that's kind of meant to be, you know, but it was always the zoo. When I thought of zoo, it was Chester Zoo. Um, no matter, even though I was in New Zealand, it was kind of the main thing that was kind of in my head. Um, and I've only been here four months. Um, but it feels like I've been here so much longer. Um, the people have helped me really settle in and there's so many knowledgeable people here, you wouldn't believe it. There's so many knowledgeable people that I've learned so much and they've really helped me settle in, inside of work and as you heard from the story before, um, outside of work as well. Um, so I guess I'll, t I'll tell you about my role. So in my role, um, I mainly work with a community engagement officer and that's kind of helping to plan and present some of the informal education sessions we do here at the zoo. Most of our sessions are off-site, so we'd go to the local Chester area and we'd um, help spread the zoo's message and the zoo's ideas of conservation um, and changes people can make in their lives that will have a positive impact on the environment. Um, we do sessions at a wide range of locations, from after-school clubs to community centres, and during the school holidays, and um, we even done ones at libraries where we've kind of read stories and um, done it there. And we work with a range of different ages, from younger years and even up to teenagers, so it's always kind of varied. It's always the same message, just always kind of go about it in a different way. Um, and it has a big focus on native wildlife and things people can do in their life to make an impact straight away. And that's whether that's building bug houses and for kids to take home and put in their garden, or making bird feeders, and learning about birds and doing bird spotting. Um, another great thing about my role is that um, I get to work with other teams in our department. So I work in the conservation, education and engagement department, and that's home to a whole bunch of teams, including the zoo rangers and the formal education team. And I get to kind of work with all these different teams. So I work with the zoo rangers sometimes, helping them run activities around the zoo. Um, I get to work with the volunteer team frequently and that's kind of when different groups come into the zoo um, and I kind of tag along and kind of help where I can there um, and even recently I've kind of been able to go out with the education team once or twice and um, Alex actually at the back who was there for my first time so <laughs> I can thank him for that um, I, and I guess the other big thing I can't forget about in my job is Hedgehog Watch um, some of you may know the zoo has a huge program where you know you can sign up, you can take a camera trap home, put it in your garden and you can kind of see what, it's about there for about a month and you can see what pictures you get um, and then we'll take it back at the end and we'll go through all the pictures and um, we'll put them in the spreadsheet and we'll kind of note down all the kind of species of native wildlife that were spotted, specifically looking for hedgehogs, um, but it's, we don't always get just hedgehogs we get a lot of foxes and a lot of birds and a lot of blackbirds in particular um, so I guess so as you can see in my role I'm kind of always getting to experience different things and build my experience in so many different areas um, and it's truly I guess a privilege to see all the different things in the department and what they do and how each one has a different effect um, but I can't um, finish this part without I guess talking about the thing I had the chance to work on a couple of months back was the wildlife wellbeing garden and um, that was actually arranged by every year there's meant to be an expedition here at the zoo where yes a group of people would go off up usually abroad and um, kind of do some conservation work but obviously because of the pandemic that's kind of um, gone down the drain so there was arranged to have a group of different teams doing different things in the local Chester area and the team I signed up to do on was 
to help do a wildlife well-being area around the staff canteen because it was very grey and kind of very void of kind of nature and life. So um, we had meetings to start with. Um, we drew out plans and what type of planters we'd want, what type of plants where, and what type of area we'd like to put them. You know, we then ordered, bought them. So it was a whole process. And then when they arrived, you know, we'd go out, we'd fill them with soil, we'd plant them. Um, all with kind of a strategy to have some area with, oh, it's really good for pollinators and bees, and other areas where, you know, it's really sensory and strong smells. And it was all kind of planned out, and to see that come to fruition, I think was really nice. And it's now a really nice area, I think, for people to have a meeting, or even just when you're having your lunch, to be able to connect to nature in a different way while you're at work. Um, and I think we had, we had the idea of not only benefiting wildlife, but people and I think the benefiting people is a bit harder because but I think we have accomplished that with this garden um, I guess for me um, I feel like I've now accomplished my goal of finding a job that I'm genuinely passionate about um, and my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner I left school and went into a profession that I wasn't passionate about because I wasn't aware of the opportunities that were out there if you were willing to take a risk willing to be brave to take that step so what could you do even if you're not thinking about a career in conservation what things could you do to help the environment there's something you could start with something as simple as going onto the Chester Zoo website and we have a shopping list full of items with sustainable palm oil you could start swapping them out with your usual items um, other things you could do, you can make bird boxes, put them in your garden, they're relatively cheap, they're easy to make. Or even simpler than that, just put a simple bird feeder out in your garden and all that will have an impact. If you wanted to take it a step further, you could look uh, in your local area about conservation projects. As we've heard from all the amazing people here today that there's so many projects always around that you can volunteer. There was the squirrel one that sounded really good. So there'll always be something going on in your area where you, if you want to go out and volunteer, it's definitely worth doing. If that is something you may want a career in. And uh, if you're looking for a career in conservation, but may not have a background in it, it doesn't matter. I'd say still go for it, because look at me, I had nothing in conservation except a passion, and that's kind of really all you need. I hope my story has hopefully inspired you to take more of a step in your life in helping wildlife and the environment. And if you're thinking about a career in conservation but are not sure whether it's a possibility, go for it, give it a try, because you'll only regret it if you don't. Thank you for listening.